film noir really had its uh, high water mark right after the war. The visual style of film noir, I think, has uh, fingerprints going back very early in German expressionist cinema. They had a sparseness, a visual and stylistic sparseness. You know, what's the bare bones story? What are the bare bones facts of the characters? And what is the basic visual information we need to tell the story? And so film noir developed an increasingly dense and rarefied visual vocabulary that had to do with very strong single source lighting, slashes of light, dark shadows, low angles, extremely strong graphic elements that had kind of a primal simplicity to them. Expecting you, Mildred, uh, obviously. John Alton is really one of the preeminent uh, film noir cinematographers. With, with Alton and the people in film noir, is they were not afraid of the dark. And in fact, they were willing to sketch things just very, very, very slightly to see. Uh, how you can use dark, not as negative space, but as the, the, the most important element in the scene. We all have been influenced by that in, in terms of what's important are the lights that you don't turn on. Go! Alton did one picture particularly that, that I feel was very influential called The Big Combo, which uh, uh, is a very simple, uh, inelegant film uh, that is somewhat brutal in a way, but which incorporates these very sparse lighting elements and, and graphic elements so that it is very much black and white. There's very little gray in that movie. You can take almost any sequence, and certainly the final sequence in the, the big combo, which has as a single light source, a searchlight going around this dock side, and there's a, ends with a, a gunfight taking place against that, and the final shot is a silhouette, you know, walking out into sort of a gray dawn. I mean, very stark imagery. up at the end of the noir period with a film like Touch of Evil by Orson Welles, which was enormously Baroque and complex in its style, but was still basically a film noir. Told you I brought you up here for a reason. Here was Welles who had caused to be brought to Universal Studios one of these Eclair Camiflex lightweight European cameras. He had a very enthusiastic young operator named Philip Lathrop. And Lathrop got very into hand-holding this and, and working with Wells on these, these, uh, these compositions. And you see some of the scenes and you realize how much hand-holding was done in the film, but it's extremely seamless. That film in particular was, was an inspiration to all of us because it was a textbook of what you could do. It was shot on a, on a small budget in a short time, mostly on locations. And, it, and again, you had almost simultaneous with the, 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 uh, the breakout in, in, in France of, of, uh, of the, the new wave, you had Orson Welles doing a new wave film in a Hollywood studio. And I think it's continued to be an inspiration for a lot of filmmakers. Mm -hmm.